Hello there, good morning and welcome to AM News with me, MFA Akosia Adeti. Now in our first story this morning, Minority Leader Dr. K. Salatu Forsen has berated government for what he says is a lack of political will to fight illegal mining. Ghana's water bodies and forests continue to be destroyed by illegal miners. Government has deployed soldiers to some areas in a renewed fight following pressure from civil society organizations and labor groups. Speaking on the return of parliament, minority leader Dr. K. Salato Forsen argued that the government has shown itself incapable of winning the fight. Ghana is under the precipice of a self-inflicted environmental genocide and destruction. Our beautiful country, once called the Gold Coast, to underscore the rich mineral deposit God has bestowed on us, is fast becoming a pale shadow of itself. The speaker, our lands, with all its rich flora and fauna, are being destroyed by the day. Our once pristine rivers and water bodies are now looking as brown as coffee, having been poisoned to satisfy the insatiable greed of unscrupulous few of our citizens. The speaker, many farmlands, including cocoa farms, have been completely destroyed, and in their place are, are unattended pits and galleys from these uncontrolled mining activities. The speaker, according to the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, the CSIR, it may take up to 300 years to restore the quality of soil damaged by these illegal mining activities. Right, Honorable Speaker, it appears that Ghana is at war against itself, and the destruction, destructive effect of this frightening and far-reaching mining, the Speaker, will go a long way to affect the lives of the people of Ghana. But in a strong response, Majority Leader Alexander Afenyo Markin accused the Minority Leader of speaking into politicizing the fight against Galamse. He insists the president has deployed every tool in his armory to raid the forest and water bodies of illegal miners. From all that we heard in the media regarding declaration of vacancies and all, I think uh, this morning I got uh, a memo which was addressed to Mr. Speaker by the respected member for Tamale South. Uh, I got a copy, and uh, he has sent a notice of petition to Mr. Speaker to declare some seat vacant. And he has listed Agona West, Sohum, Amenfi Central, and Formina. So he relies on the 99 and also Ancos is. Mr. Speaker, we cannot, as a political class, blame game on Bogalamse and say that a particular political party, in this case the Akufuadu administration, has failed in its fight against Galamse and leave out what happened preceding the administration of Akufuadu uh, administration. Indeed, it's, it's a known fact that Akufuadu administration took a decision to deploy the Ghana Armed Forces through what is known as Operation Halt in the early years of his presidency. And the aim was to combat the threat of illegal mining, which was wrecking deliberate havoc on the nation's water bodies and forest reserves. And Mr. Speaker, it was because at the time he took office, the Galamse activity had gotten out of hand and the then administration had no immediate answer to it. While the operation achieved some successes, various challenges arose that undermined the effort to fully eradicate the menace. Mr. Speaker, as a parliament, it is important for us to acknowledge the president for taking a bold decision to fight the menace of Galamse. A virtual legislative instrument that allows mining in forest reserves to parliament for revocation. The president committed that LI2462 will be revoked and that was key in convincing organized labor to suspend its planned strike. Majority Leader Alexander Fenyomarkin says the airline has not yet been returned to the House for revocation. 
matters that come to Parliament uh, will be dealt with. I mean, I would, I would check on the instrument. But I, I have been finding out when it comes to enactment, we have the power of revocation through repeal and all. I'm, I'm still learning whether subsidiary law will require any action by, by, by Parliament when same is being revoked. Um, you know, we still learn. The law is always at large. So I'm still trying to research on whether executive instruments or legislative instruments will come and all that. But I'm sure uh, bringing it to Parliament, I don't know, but we'll check it. Yeah, so if it comes and it's a matter of we doing revocation, what procedure and all would, would, would also be looked at. So um, updated on that. Now, the National Road Safety Authority is rolling out a monitoring app to simplify the reporting of reckless driving incidents. Now, in 2023, Ghana saw 14,135 road crashes, which claimed 2,276 lives and left 15,409 injured. Speaking at the NRISA's 25th anniversary in Accra, acting NRSA body chairman, Jermaine Nkrumah, announced the app's introduction to combat its growing, this growing issue and urge drivers to stay vigilant. Abiola Pombwating has more in this report. In 2023, Ghana saw 14,135 road crashes, leading to 2,276 deaths and 15,409 injuries, according to the Motor Traffic and Transport Department, MTTD, of the Ghana Police Service. Despite a drop in accidents this year, Acting Board Chairman of the NRSA, Jeremain Nkroma, highlighted that the death toll remains alarmingly high. He attributed the majority of fatalities to commercial vehicles, urging drivers to exercise greater caution on the roads as part of efforts to curb these tragic losses. Uh, particularly when you look at the deaths, went from 2018, 2020, 2073, 2528, and it went as far as 2924. And now they've been coming down consistently. And this year, we're hoping to go over, uh, below 2000, but we're crossing our fingers. When you look at this number, this year, 1,614. It's not just a number. This is 1,000 funerals, more than 1,000 children, spouses, everything. Each time this happened, people gather where they are red and black to mourn. And so to me, these are not just numbers. These are human beings. And until we, it, we, we, it hits home, that it's in all our interest to make sure that the roads, uh, rules are followed. While acknowledging the drop in road accidents due to intensified public education, Chief Director at the Transport Ministry, Maybel Sego, emphasized the need for adopting innovative and data-driven strategies to achieve even greater reductions. The Road Safety Authority has seen some consistent reductions in road fatalities and injuries over the past few years. Some of the notable interventions include the following. One, launch of the Arrive Alive and Stay Alive road safety campaign. Two, launch of the Transport Ghana project, a digital transfer, uh, platform for commercial transport operations. Three, launch of the Code of Conduct for political parties and political activities to ensure road users' safety during political season. Four, Refresher training for about 13,000 commercial vehicle drivers. Five, institution of road safety awards to recognize and honor commercial vehicle drivers, corporate institutions, individuals, and the media for their contributions to road safety in the country. Six, collaboration with the MTTD of the Ghana Police Service for the automation of the traffic law enforcement. And seven, the introduction of the web-based road accident data management system, 
to curb data discrepancies, among others. The anniversary was celebrated on the theme, 25 years of promoting road safety and awarding excellence. Abigail upon Boateng's report, read to you. Now, as part of the broader U.S. strategy to prevent conflict and promote stability in coastal West Africa, the U.S. government, in collaboration with the German government, allocated $400 million to train security personnel in four West African countries, Ghana, Togo, Benin, and Ivory Coast. The initiative titled The Strategy to Prevent Conflict and Promote Stability aims to curb the spread of violent extremist organizations from the Sahel into northern coastal West Africa and to address regional conflicts, now enhance state stability and strengthen the resilience of local communities. Carlos Caloni has more. To curb the spread of violent extremist organizations from the Sahel into northern coastal West Africa, a multi-year U.S.-German conflict prevention initiative dubbed the Coastal State Stability Mechanism has been launched in four countries, Ghana, Togo, Benin, and Ivory Coast. In Ghana, the program is active in Northeast, Savannah, Upper West, and Upper East regions. The $40 million initiative, according to the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Conflict and Stabilization Operations, and Witkonski aims to prevent conflict and foster stability across the continent. Our work is part of a broader U.S. strategy in coastal East Africa and beyond uh, the U.S. strategy to prevent conflict and promote stability. Uh, through the strategy, working in the coastal West Africa region, we are seeking to enhance social cohesion, improve government responsiveness, and support security. Through these initiatives, we aim to create lasting impacts that contribute to more secure and resilient Ghana and the region. When Africa succeeds, the world succeeds. The U.S. Ambassador Virginia Palmer voiced serious security concerns over the growing issue of illegal mining, or Galamse, warning that it could be exploited by violent extremists. Violent extremists exploit all kinds of criminal networks. So smuggling of gold, just like smuggling of cigarettes, frankly, can be exploited by, by violent extremists. Um, I, I know that the Ministry of Security is concerned that violent extremists might come in and even work in illegal mining um, and then use those proceeds um, to fund their activities. So it's of concern. Um, and the networks um, that international crime um, is exploited by violent extremists, and that's the problem. So we need to be attentive both to international crime and cooperation to stop it um, as we work to build resilience um, against violent extremists. Um, and the United States does have some programs, um, and we'll have to examine um, if, if there can be more. I know that, for example, there are some meetings next year um, about um, illegal gold mining and what can be done about it. We've sponsored tech camps um, to see if there are technological fixes. In response to the recent dry spell, U.S. Ambassador Virginia Palmer announced that her government will provide $1.7 million through the LEAP program to support those affected in northern Ghana. We're going to deliver another $1.7 million, which is close to 30 million CDs. Um, to mostly through the LEAP program, but to assist people affected by the drought. Um, we're, um, we're very pleased that the rains have come and that livestock will be less affected, but we know that the corn crop and grain crops in particular have been badly affected and that lots of um, northern families um, and southern families dependent on those crops um, will be affected. So that money through the LEAP program will help God's most vulnerable and we're very pleased to be able to. Speaking on Ghana's upcoming general election, German Ambassador Daniel Kroll emphasized the importance of strengthening democratic resilience across the continent as a key to ensuring regional stability. Democracy is very close to the heart of the Ghanaian, and this is what makes me so confident that the Ghanaians will be the guardians of, uh, of the election, and they will make sure that their vote is respected truly in the outcome of the election. So, um, I sense that the uh, uh, Ghanaians are, are very proud of, of the uh, recent uh, decades of uh, democratic history. We, we strongly believe that it is relevant for Ghana, for West Africa, and the continent that, that the Ghanaians uh, secure free of elections. The joint initiative by the US and German government aims to enhance stability, 
and security in Africa, driving progress towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. For Joy News, Carlos Caloni, Accra. So Isaiah Amada Awuku, a student at the University of Ghana, once endured the gurulin tax of pushing his manual wheelchair 26 kilometers every week to attend lectures. Now his story spared an overwhelming response of compassion. In a touching turn of events, Isaiah has received two new electronic wheelchairs donated by the Ghana Statistical Association and friends from Arizona and Texas in U.S. Isaiah's heart remains set on giving back. He plans to donate one of the wheelchairs to someone who also needs it. Emmanuel Jiveno of our education desk has more. I'm determined. I know for sure when I'm able to put in my possible best effort, then God will help me. When Join News first highlighted Isaiah's plight, he was battling the odds but refuses to allow his physical challenges stop him from pursuing his academic dreams. It's not easy for someone to just give out an amount of 15000 for this group here. So if someone is able to do such a, a, a kind gesture to me, then I have to appreciate the person. In fact, I don't know how will I express that gratitude. Isaiah's call for help has been answered. Today, he has not one, but two electronic wheelchairs. The Ghana Statistical Association stepped forward, providing an electronic wheelchair, a full scholarship for his master's degree, textbooks, and financial support for his upkeep. Professor Nicholas Nsowa Nyama is the president of the association. The person wants to be a statistician, he wants to be a professor of statistics like us. Uh, he wants to work at Ghana Statistical Service. Uh, he, so it means he had already decided that he wanted to be a statistician. So then uh, I'll take it up. We have for you the wheelchair, electronic wheelchair. We have also for you the books here to aid your studies and then your future education also that is also being handed over to you all organized by Ghana Statistical Association a group of friends in Arizona and Texas USA also came through purchasing another electronic wheelchair for Isaiah their collective effort will make Isaiah's daily commute much easier while offering him hope for a brighter future. Isaiah, visibly moved by the overwhelming generosity, struggled to find the words to express his gratitude. My words cannot express it to the full length. I'm grateful. And I say, may God bless you and grant you strength long life grateful for the generosity he has received he believes it's only right to extend that same kindness to someone in similar situation we are in this together i'm not the only person in this one so i'm planning on giving out to someone also like me that will support his or her movement his mother elizabeth amathepe couldn't hide her jaw. Madak Penam Awiahoa, Yak Pedada, a Velena Pupo of a tail like ye. A bay do do your coda to my ye, Maudasiman I owe. Madak Pena, ye made nya ali magaka dak penao. Cut ye who an air, half a novite the caraca. Isaiah's journey, once marked by struggle, is now filled with hope. With these new resources, he is closer than ever to achieving his academic dreams, navigating campus with ease. Thanks in part to the Ghana Statistical Association, the group of friends residing in Texas and Arizona. Imano Jivenu, Joy News. 
and we all excited and very thoughtful of Isaiah's words to also give one of the wheelchairs to somebody who will need it. That is Join News Get Results. Now do stay with us for more. Just updates coming up shortly. Well, you can call me Mr. Business Update. It's time now for me to serve you. And in my first story, a senior finance lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School, Dr. Benjamin Amwa, has challenged the Bank of Ghana to work more at reducing the cost of borrowing to propel private sector growth. According to him, despite banks offering low interest rates on loans, managers of the economy must also take a relook at the macroeconomic indicators. He believes when these indicators are right, banks will be compelled to reduce their rates further. Dr. Amwa spoke to Joy Business. This is what the central bank must do. See, these rates that the banks are charging, the banks are not charging because they feel like charging it. It is a representation of the overall cost of doing business in the industry, especially when it comes to credit and deposit mobilization. So if BOG can work on reducing the cost of credit in terms of inflation, in terms of interest rates, then it will definitely trigger because no bank will go and mobilize money at a particular rate and come and give it out at a low rate. The bank would not do that. So right. if we want to really, really see the rate declining sharply, we need to look at the macro again. Bank of Ghana works with Ministry of Finance. And so they have to make sure that the rates are low enough to drop down and to pull down the rates at which the banks are giving the facility. Because there's no way a bank will give out a credit facility when the MPC rate is around 27. It's going to be extremely difficult. That's fine. So they first have to work at it at their end and then to trigger down into the banking sector. And then we, the retail clients, can benefit from it. Now, financing remains a significant hurdle for many small businesses in the oil and gas sector seeking to capitalize on Ghana's local content policy. The head of oil and gas at Stambic Bank, Sylvia Mento Foriose, emphasizes the need for companies to establish strong partnerships with banks to improve their access to funding for growth and development. She shared these insights during an interview with Joy Business in Accra. With over 300 indigenous companies registered in the oil and gas industry, one might expect local players to dominate the market. However, less than 5% of these companies possess the financial muscle or have built the requisite capacity to effectively contribute a 5% capital requirement and other technology requirement for exploration and production. Head of oil and gas at Stambic Bank, Sylvia Mesa Ufuriose, believes this calls for deliberate collaboration between banks and oil firms. Banks can partner with industry stakeholders to develop local content by having regular engagement with the regulator on policy and regulatory frameworks. They can also do this by having workshops on capacity development and skills transfer. Banks can also do this by having thought leadership sessions and they can also collaborate with operators and contractors in providing financing for the local content. Ghana's Petroleum Local Content Regulation was passed to promote local content in the oil and gas sector. The framing of the regulations is aimed to generate positive synergies between the oil industry and other sectors of the economy. And it's a wrap for business, handing over back to MFA Aditi. Thank you for joining us today on the AM News. There's more on the show. News Review up next. Thank you.